guys, Ash here, coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends with another champion guide. Today is going to be my main man, Miscreated Monster, the theme of my intro on this channel. Uh, Buck says, hey Ash, could you do a champion guide on Miscreated Monster? I just pulled him in the event, and I think a lot of people think he has become power crept. Thanks. Buck, shame on those people, man. Hopefully in today's video, guys, I prove to you the miscreated monster is not just a champion you can get some utility out of, but he's still a beast in the game. It takes me back to the old days, guys. I actually watched it in my my raid chronicle uh, here for the fourth anniversary at the time of this recording. But miscreated monster came out. I want to say four or five months after I started playing this game back in Halloween of 2019, along with Madame Ceres and Brackus the Shifter and Harvest Jack, and it was one of like the first release batch of new champions while I was playing the game and I was like oh wow cool they come up with new champions too now there's been like a thousand more added since then and we're going to review all of them somebody actually asked me apropos of nothing recently in these comments are we only reviewing good champions here no we're reviewing all champions, but I'm trying to go by your requests, and it just so happens you guys are requesting a lot of pretty good ones. So, maybe in two years on this channel, expect a lot of crappy champion guides. <laughs> so, we will see. Time will tell. But the cool thing is, is honestly, a lot of champions in this game, even the average champions, have a niche, which is one of the reasons that Raid is so cool, right? It's like... So, you know, even common and uncommon champions, some of them, not a lot of them, uh, you know, you can get a lot of utility out of, and, and a lot of epics and a lot of rares are, are really unsung heroes in one particular place in the game. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> get choked up when I start talking about miscreated monster, guys. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me there, guys. You get choked up talking about miscreated monster. So, uh, we also have lore. Lo Excuse me, got choked up talking about Miscreated Monster, guys. We also have lore for you guys today on Miscreated Monster, and I have not read it. I never read this, roar, this lore before I record, and uh, it's probably evident in how bad I butcher the uh, stories at times. Uh, but I'm really curious on how they interweave Frankenstein's monster here clearly, right? Uh, how they interweave him into the, the you know, Teleria in Raid Shadow Legends and the history of the world that we experience in this game. First off, what does he do? He's a Knight's Revenant uh, Magic Affinity Epic Champion. Uh, he looks super cool. I mean, one of my favorite looking champions. I love this kind of blue um, electricity or whatever it is. Uh, it reminds me a little bit too of whatever's, whatever Basatha has got going on. Is he a lizard? Yeah, he's a lizard man. It's kind of the same blue emanating whatever it is, electricity, I guess, right? Uh, going through his veins. So very, very cool there. Uh, why is Miscreated Monster so good? Or why am I trying to say he's so good? Well, on his meaty fist ability, on his A1 ability, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance when booked, uh, placing a stun debuff for one turn. Pause. Definitely a champion worth booking. And... I don't want to say required to book, but you'll get a lot of extra utility out of him when he is booked. So a good option. Uh, also has a 60% chance of placing a decreased defense for one turn if the stun debuff is placed. It's not reliable, but it's nice to have. Not going to land against most bosses, obviously, in the game. But that stun at 30% on each hit, not bad at all. On the A2, Lightning Storm. Three turn cooldown when you book it down. Attacks all enemies. 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Really good on the three turn cooldown. Plays a shield buff on all allies for not one, not two, but three turns, equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. For that reason, we're obviously going to build this champion with 100% crit rate. This champion has one of the best shields in the game when there's a lot of mobs alive. So, like, Spider, uh, Ice Golem with the minions. The more damage we can do, the more meaty... It was, it was that? Yeah. The more meaty, like his meaty fists, that shield will be. On the A3, it's alive! Places a big version. Now, this ability is better than it looks, right? For one, you know, one special reason, right? And it's the duration of these buffs. You'll notice three turns and three turns. Remember that because it's on a four turn cooldown. I think when a lot of people look at this champion, and maybe this is what they're talking about when they're talking about power creep on miscreated monster. They say, oh, it's on a four turn cooldown. I want, you know, ally protect on a, on a three turn cooldown nowadays, but you're getting it for three turns. And uh, obviously you can have it for four turns if you pick up the lasting gifts uh, mastery as well. I like to pick up masteries with you guys on these guides, but 
Oddly enough, I blue screened. I was halfway through recording this video. I blue screened and then I don't want to pay more gems to redo them again. So I'm just going to show you what I went with. Anyway, uh, ally protect for three turns on a four turn cooldown, right? So that's great. That's basically just as good as ally protect for two turns on a three turn cooldown. We also have heals this champion by half of his max HP. That's beautiful, right? Uh, so obviously not his current HP, but his max HP. So we're getting that big, nice heal, especially if we scale up that HP, which is easy to do. He has almost 23K on the HP. Has a continuous heal on him for three turns as well, again on a four turn cooldown, which is why it's imperative to book this champion as we talked about earlier. But it keeps getting better. He has the spooky groan on the passive. This is no cooldown, it's just always active. Places a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under an ally protection buff. So ally protection, three turns long. Anybody who's attacking your team, they have a 50-50 chance of losing their turn if they get that fear on them. So more control in a kit that's already chock full of control with the stun on the A2 and the stun on the A1. So he's bringing a very unique and powerful blend of support to your team, a little bit of damage to your team, and of course control to your team. That's why he's so incredible. He's a really special champion who, in my eyes, you can make the case a lot of champions have been power crept. A lot of good champions have been power crept. Not to pick on him, but, you know, Jareg, for example. Great champion. A lot of HP on him, too. But, you know, a four-turn increased defense ally protect for two turns. Compare that to a miscreated monster. Obviously, he's not bringing increased defense. Different type of champion. But this is a champion who used to be S tier, who I now would say is maybe like B tier, you know? Nothing against Jareg. I don't mean to pick on you because I actually really like that champion. But I'm trying to say, unlike Jareg, I think the miscreated monster is, is, is still amazing, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and show you how I have him built here. Now, I have been, guys. Have I used him recently? Okay, okay cool. He's one of my only two fully ascended epic champions on my account. Uh, Tagore, who's also one of my favorites, I'll have a guide on him at some point here, uh, is my other one. So I'm going to really show off his blessing. I'm really, really happy with the blessing selection on this champion. Uh, but before we get to that, let's quickly review his masteries here. So we went support tree, we went offense tree. There's only one thing in hindsight, because I just repicked these, uh, that I would change here. And I would actually get rid of single out increase a uh, damage increase on targets with less than 40 percent hp by eight percent and instead i would pick up both healing savior and rapid response as a tier three mastery on the support tree but i do want to go offense tree pick up war master for this champion a little bit extra damage out of him which is always nice uh again more damage the better for that a2 especially as well uh on the support tree we're going to go with more HP, HP-based champion, and HP, we want a lot of HP on our ally protectors anyway, right? So we're going to go with more HP, we're going to go and lay on hands, he is bringing those heals, right? He has that 50% heal on his A3 ability, so increase the value of heals as champion cast by 5%, it's going to be 100% mandatory to get shield bear on this champion, increase the value of the shield buffs as champion cast by 5%, it's going to be great because his shields are already amazing as we discussed, uh, especially if there's a lot of enemies alive. I already told you that I would go with Healing Savior as well as Rapid Response there. Rapid Response, he's bringing the shield and he's bringing the ally protect and he's bringing the continuous heal. So a lot of chances to have a 30% or to have a turn meter increase, excuse me, of 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expired. Uh, I do have basic sets on him today, so Laura Steel is going to be a great option. And then we have Spirit Haste, increase speed by 8 for each dead ally. I think that makes a lot of sense on this champion. Help protect the team, protect our reviver. Uh, if somebody dies on the team, there then we can get more control, more shields, more ally protect, more heals, right? Uh, and then lasting gifts, of course. The, extent, the a chance to extend the duration it's already three turns let's extend it to four on that allied protect not to mention the continuous heal and then the shields also on the a2 ability so those are the masteries on this champion on the a2 too three turn cooldown three turn shield right not bad all right, so hopefully I'm talking you into a little bit to this dude. If you're one of those few out there who thought he was power crept, how dare you? Uh, we, went, we were running Immortal, Immortal Accuracy. So I love Immortal sets on Allied Protectors. I love Regeneration sets too on Allied Protectors. But we want to get more HP, right? He's an HP-based champion. And we want to get heals because he's going to be taking a significant amount of damage because of that Allied Protect on everybody, big version. Uh, and then we have Accuracy as well. Obviously, stat priorities on this champion are going to be uh, HP, speed, crit rate, and accuracy, okay? 
We do need that crit rate to be 100% on this champion, at least we'd like it to be, because of the shield value based on the damage that he's putting out, right? Uh, the shield, 25% of the damage inflicted, so we do need that crit rate on this champion. Let's take a quick look at his multipliers here. Uh, thanks to hellhades.com. He has a, a, a an HP-based champion. I don't know about you guys, but it's always hard to make something about the uh, the decimals, like, you know, one-tenth of an HP uh, on the A1, and then he has 0 0.21 on the A2. It's hard, at least for me, to just be like, okay, is that good or bad? I forgot. Uh, but uh, suffice it to say, his damage is not awful, but it's not crazy either. It, they give it a weak uh, grading overall, but it still does enough damage with 100% crit rate and some HP, because it's based on HP, to give you that nice, nice shield. Obviously, we want the accuracy to land the stun, uh, so these stats are great great i've seen people build him with crit damage instead of crit rate on the gauntlets we have crit rate here uh crit damage for even more damage ergo another bigger shield uh so yeah sure great but this is a more realistic build i would say instead of accuracy i would go perception if i had the gear we want to go hp percentage on his chest we want to go speed on the boots we want to go hp uh or accuracy on the banner in this case we have accuracy uh we want to go with crit damage on the amulet not hp because that will give us more damage having crit damage uh for that shield and then we want to go hp on the ring uh, other than that we already talked about stat priorities to get from the substats elsewhere uh let's go ahead and try good old frank out in battle so where are we using this guy well let me just pull up hey to see where he recommends first my thoughts are everywhere <laughs> spider ice golem definitely come to mind is scarab king as well so he gives him arena he's great in the arena you know you don't see him in endgame arena. You don't see much of him when you get to like goal four, uh, platinum arena, but he's a, just a really good support control champion. You know, sometimes when you're constructing an arena team to farm your great hall, you have your speed booster, you have your, 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 uh, decreased defense champion or debuffer. And you have your nuker, and sometimes you have that fourth slot, and you're like, okay, what do I want to put in with these three champions? Mystery and Monster can be a great option for that because he brings survivability and control to your team. <clears throat> Doom Tower, great rating. Ice Golem, great rating. Spider, Fire Knight, Dragon, you name it. Scarab King, five out of five. Magma Dragon, Frost Spider. I mean, you can see that he's a very versatile champion because his job is primarily to keep your squad alive, you know? And you need that everywhere. So, Doom Tower time, guys. Whew, let's go. I'm getting fired up talking about Mistrated Monster. All right, Callan, get out of here. All right, Mistrated, you're in. Wait, I didn't even talk about the blessing really quickly, guys. I love this chain breaker. Uh, we haven't really spoken much, I don't think, in any of the 25 guides we have out before Mistreated Monster here on the new channel about chain breaker. But at the start of the champion's turn, has a chance of removing any stun, freeze, sleep, provoke, fear, true fear, petrifications, debuffs placed on this champion. Now, obviously, incredibly good in places like Ice Golem. It's great for the arena as well. Anywhere he's going to be CC'd, we don't want him to be CC'd, man. We want him to land those stuns. We want him to CC them. Uh, we're going to get great stats, defense, HP, accuracy, speed. Love all of that, right? And then the coolest thing about this ability, at least in my, my my opinion, is whenever this champion is hit by an enemy while under any of the debuffs mentioned above, has a chance of partially filling this champion's turn meter occurs once per hit. So 25% chance of removing debuffs and then a 40% chance of filling this turn meter, champion's turn meter by 20% on each hit. So get that turn meter boost too. Pretty cool. I like Chain Breaker. Again, it's not a mastery that we talk about too often here on the channel, so I thought I would highlight it today. And Tagore, there's my man, my other six-star Ascendant. These are my only two six-star epics. Do you guys have any six-star epics or legendaries? Let me know in the comments below. I get pretty lucky on these two champions, and Tagore is personally similar to Miscreated. They're two of my favorite uh, uh, epics in the game. All right, so we have Secret Room 11. This is Doom Tower Hard, you can see here. Not that I have to prove it to you guys. I don't know why I always like, see, proof. Uh, but here we go, guys. Let's do this. Oh, Flyja. So we have Flyja, Flyja, whatever, for damage dealer control. We have Tagore for a reviver increased speed champion. We have Royal Guard for a nuker, and we have a debuffer in Ugo. And then Kellen, get out of here. Now we have some support with Miscreated Monster. Check this team out, man. These mobs are incredibly difficult. They're level 300-ish? Let me see. 300, exactly. So, here we go. We're going to start debuffing, increase speed. We're going to come in here with an AoE. 
do a little bit of damage. Let's use this A2. I want you to see that we have one, two, three, four, five enemies alive. Boom! Look at that shield. Now we're all, look at three stuns and a nice shield. That's what I'm talking about. You see that utility on this champion, right? Like that is really, really solid. So now everybody's CC'd, everything's looking great. They hit hard, these mobs, right? And they do have a cleanse because they have Sanguinea, so that kind of sucks. But the good news is, is we got that the ally protect, right? We got the ally protect and we have a reviver on the team. So don't you worry about Flyja. I'm not sure if she has any gear on her now that I, now that I look at her dead on the ground. Uh, but let's see if we can still get by here. Uh, so unfortunately, we, what we don't have is a buff remover. Because look at all these continuous freaking heals on this team. Is that all Sanguinea? Uh, 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 uh. You know what now is a good time for it, guys? As we do this incredibly slow run right now. Uh, let's do the lore, huh? And we'll come back to this fight. We'll see how we're doing. All right. So, Miscreated Monster. I'm going to have a link to the lore uh, for you guys. Sometimes I forget to do it. I apologize. Uh, in the comments below as well. If you want to read along, feel free to do so. Or you can stammer through it with yours truly. All right. I'm excited for this one. It happened many years ago in the city of Arnok. A talented young mage with the name by the name of uh, Alvano sought to unravel a mystery that had long mesmerized scholars and wizards alike. The enigma of creation. Indeed, for all their effort, no, no mortal could replicate the creation of a soul that truly animates a living being. Souls could be manipulated, preserved, and bound to a body in the limbo of undeath, but never conjured into an artificial vessel. Alvano was an incredibly gifted man whose intellect allowed him to study in the most prestigious academy in Arnok despite his humble origins. Affected by the death of his parents, Alvano sought to use his affinity for magic and his knowledge to defeat death once and for all. Alas, for all his genius, he was also obsessive, unable to see the big picture. Thus, throughout his research, Alvano never once questioned his goal of methods. The result was all that mattered to him. Though his talents were not enough to make Ether coalesce into a living anima, Alvano reasoned he could take advantage of echoes in shreds. As bodies resurrected by the necromancer still possessed vestiges of their former skills, he suspected that some form of imprint lingers after the soul's passing, and that these imprints can be forged together into something new. Thus, Alvino's morbid obsession with the dead had begun. He would spend days and weeks in mortuaries and, and cemeteries observing and, when possible, experimenting with the recently past. Eventually, he devised a ritual of his own making by sewing together pieces of flesh that, in Alvino's mind, resonated with, the, with, uh, with most the imprints of the soul and placing a precious magical gem in the heart, he sought to craft a vessel capable of withstanding the massive force of arcane energy that would be required for the soul to burst into being. He, st he started the ritual at the height of a raging storm, positioning an artificial body in one of the highest towers of the city, chanting passages from an ancient grimmeries and directing the stolen power of lightning that struck the tower's spire. Arcs of electricity struck out from the bound vessel, glowing brightly as Al Alvino poured his own magic into the focus gem. Finally, with a howl of pain and misery, the creature lur lurched forth and broke the enchanted chains, keeping it in place. In a moment of trauma and shock, the monster struck out wildly and flung his creators off the raised dais where the ritual was taking place, killing him instantly, then stumbling out onto the streets. Terrified townsfolk speak of horrid massacres and blood running in rivers, though those are nothing but tall tales. The hulking monster did cause panic among any who crossed its path, albeit few dared to walk the city in heavy storm, and none of them were fools enough to approach the raging monstrosity that rampaged towards the nearest gates. It did grievously wound several guards that tried to bar its passage, then burst out into the wilderness outside. 
From that day, the creature had barely been seen. Travelers do occasionally talk about a mishappen giant stalking through forests and fields of dust, but thus far, no one has been able to say for certain what happened to Alvano's ambition, ambition, creation, and, indeed, if he had succeeded in giving it a soul, or this is merely another undead animated by the power of magic. Wow. So he killed Alvano, huh? Speaking of kill, Flyge is dead again. <laughs> Coming back and Flyge just keeps on dying. Ah, uh, no big deal. What did you guys think of that story? I, uh, well, they didn't really, uh, okay, the pros are pretty cool story. I like that he killed the master because I like twisted dark endings. <laughs> uh, that's the pro for me. The con is they really didn't tie it into anything anything no other characters there in terms of raid lore or anything like that really just the location but it's still a pretty cool story so i thought it wasn't my fave i had high expectations but it wasn't that bad so guys you can see miscreated monsters doing a fantastic job not only shielding and keeping everybody alive with his ally protect and his great shield but look at all those stuns man He's a stun machine. He does it all, and we absolutely love to see it. He's certainly a champion that you guys can get a lot of utility on. I'm showing you a random secret room here. I think that Fly just naked, man. She's not doing much damage, and she's dying left and right. I apologize. But you can see lasting gifts proccing there, right? It was not bad damage from, from Flyja there. But Lasting Gifts giving her a four turn on that ally protect, which is definitely necessary given how she's been dying with a great alacrity. Uh, but basically, guys, look at this. I mean, what a great carry champion. Uh, I'm not going to show you a whole spider run because I don't think I have a team already. Maybe I will. But I'm just going to show you the, the size of this shield for spider. I mean... If you're having problems with your team dying, right, champions like maybe your Cold Heart, maybe your Royal Guard who's on this squad, maybe they're just, they're just, they can't get back to their cooldowns before they're dying. Well, look no further than Miscreated Monster to give you a nice beefy shield to keep your squad alive. But yeah, man, he's responsible for so much on this team. And that's why I love this champion so much, right? He's doing a little bit of damage. You'll see at the end, doing a little bit of damage, but so much protection and so much control. And they just don't make them like that. I guess maybe they do because I love to gore too. <laughs> but either way, not often do we get epics this good in the game. And he's still good here years later after he's been released into the game. All right, so let's see, man. Miscreated Monster puts out a mill damage. He's just hanging there with Royal Guard. He's like, I got this, dude. And then he put out a million in healing as well. Tagore leading the way there with 1.7 mil, uh, mil on the heels. And Ugo as well doing a really nice job there. But you can see he's bringing so much to the table there. Really, really love this champion. Let me quickly take you over to Spider's Den before we call this a video. Do I still have this crap team assembled? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's not a crap team. It's a fun team. Uh, let's pretend we didn't have dupe cold hearts on our account, right? Wanted to run a royal, uh, excuse me, a miscreated monster instead just to make sure everybody stays alive. So now we have Zephyr Sniper. We have a royal guard. We have a cold heart, a stag knight on the squad. I'm actually going to lead in. I'm going to take it off auto here. And I'm going to lead in with a A3. I'm going to open with the A3 instead because we don't really need the stuns or the shield just yet. I have Stagnite in a shield set here, so we already have a shield. So why lead off with the A3, right? Instead, we're just going to have our good old uncommon Zephyr Sniper tank for us. Going to come in with a decreased speed on Stagnite's A1. She's also in lifesteal gear, as you can see here. Now, eh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and wait one more turn on that shield, right? And then we'll come this way. I think from here on out, we can just put it on auto. But this is the this is the issue, and it can apply to pretty much any stage. Obviously, going against spirit uh, affinity is great. But this is the issue, right? Is sometimes, while we're waiting to get back to another Royal Guard takedown or another Cold Heart uh, Heart Seeker ability, uh, a lot of teams tend to die, right? But look at that shield. You see how beefy that is? Look at this. Look at this. That's the power of miscreated monster. And although it's going to take you a while, it's tough to break through that freaking shield, man. It really is. It buys us plenty of time, even though the spider is healing here. You know, 
we're still going to get the job done because we can do more damage than she can heal for. And in the meantime, it's so easy to keep everybody alive. And we have Zephyr Sniper tanking too. So nothing's ever going to be in jeopardy. And it might not be the most efficient in terms of speed type of run. A miscreated monster really with any sort of team, right? Even an HP burn team. He can stun those spiralings, right? So there's a lot of potential for him to help out. And you can see that Zephyr Sniper, our tank, her HP was just getting low. We just come back in there with a massive shield again. Look at Royal Guard, man. He's almost, look at Zephyr Sniper. She's almost all shield. I mean, that's a big, big shield, guys. So um, we're almost done here. We'll wrap up by, by letting you guys know, first of all, I really appreciate your support here on the channel. This isn't going to age well if you're watching a year or two in advance and just want to know how to build this created monster. But we started this channel a couple weeks ago, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I, I, do a, I do a ton uh, in terms of YouTube content right now. We're rocking five YouTube channels. But I really do enjoy looking at champions, you know, uh, whether they're good, whether they're bad, somewhere in between. I just find it really fun and I love doing the lore and stuff like that. So I don't look at this as, you know, a job in the way that I do my main job. Uh, you know, I look at this as just something that I do as almost a hobby on the side. So if you guys have any recommendations, please keep them coming and please, please be patient because if I'm getting, you know, 50 champion recommendations a day. Well, that's that's awesome. I love it, but I can only get to you like one or two. So guys, thank you for watching and as always, take care guys.